Are you one of the high achieving women wondering if your success is the reason you struggle in romance? Let me reassure you of something. Men don't have problems with your success, but there is something else that many high achieving women do, which causes them to struggle in romantic relationships. Today, I will share with you exactly why you may be struggling and what you need to do so you can enjoy relationships like those annoying women who seemingly have it easy. Things just work out for them. Men are eager to pursue them for the next level in the relationship and their partners care to make them happy. Does this describe you? You are tired of spinning in circles, trying to figure out what might be wrong with you as meeting someone that will last is just so hard. Or perhaps you are struggling in a relationship, constantly speculating about your partner's issues. Here is the deal. This right here is the issue. The problem is that you rely extensively on logical reasoning to problem solve issues in relationships. This worked for other aspects in life, but in re romantic relationships, no. Doing this keeps you stuck in your head and unable to actually see what may be the problem. But you are in luck because you don't have to be stuck like this anymore. I'm about to reveal two major ways in which you high achieving women struggle in relationships. Here are a couple of mistakes you all make when faced with difficulties in relationships. These mistakes don't let you or your partner grow and resolve potential issues. The first is that you put all your attention on your partner, trying to figure out his issues. This usually leads to you accommodating him, disregarding yourself and your own needs. It's wonderful that you can understand your partner, but positioning yourself as his problem solver creates a different kind of dynamic with him, like a motherly figure. This eventually kills off the romance and ultimately you deny him an opportunity to grow and be a man you need him to be. This also leads you to never exploring what you truly need in a relationship. You don't give him a chance to make accommodations for you. Ultimately, you reinforce your own limiting beliefs. A lot of women don't feel worthy of love deep down or they feel that they can't really trust anyone completely. They just feel that nobody can love them in the ways they need. This way, you never give the relationship a true chance. You don't develop fine communication skills necessary for a romantic relationship and deep emotional connection. Let me just make sure we understand each other. You may have excellent communication skills in general, but for romantic relationships, there is a missing piece. Because you're focused on him, you don't communicate effectively. You're most likely not in tune with yourself and your communication winds up feeling like a tax for your partner. You may think you've done everything right, feeling good about yourself, accommodating your partner, but never truly looking deep inside. What are your needs? Similarly, you may not really be attuned to your partner in spite of speculating so much about his issues. Beneath all of this, you may find a lot of self-esteem issues, fears of being abandoned, taken advantage of. These are valid fears based on your past experiences, but if you keep operating from these fears, you will not be able to create a deep, soulful connection with a man. A lot of you often wind up giving up on a relationship, frustrated blaming your partner before ever figuring out if somebody is right for you. Notice the underlying beliefs here are that you are responsible to make everything work and make everyone happy. It's of course burdensome and a part of you hopes that the relationship will end so you can be relieved of that burden. This profile fits women who may have some avoidant tendencies in terms of attachment. It may be challenging for you to create emotional connection, but don't fret, I will give you a few journaling prompts that will help you start shifting this. On the other hand, there are women who are completely dedicated to their relationships, regardless of how these relationships affect them. You may be one of those women that just closes your eyes, falling in love with someone, hoping things will work out. These women also don't express their needs and boundaries in the ways that allow their partner to actually understand them. And this, my friend, is most likely a trauma response because you may not be in touch with your feelings and needs just like avoidant girls are. Trauma response? Yes, because once upon a time, 
you determined that there was no space for you to feel and express your needs. Nobody was there to help you understand yourself and honor your needs. Affection was provided inconsistently and you may feel like you have to scream to get your partner to show you affection. So naturally, you develop a limiting belief that you are not worthy of your needs being met. You're not worthy of love. You're not worthy of somebody being there for you. And yet you hope that things should just work out. You hope that there will be someone who will get you, understand you, see your needs. Needs you yourself are afraid to voice. Underlying beliefs here are that you are somehow too much and what you want is somewhat shameful. All you really want is to give and receive love, but you are afraid to express your desires openly. And then you put up with bad relationships, hoping that love will grow and somehow your partner will meet your needs. This is usually how women with anxious tendencies manage relationships. So what is the key for both types? Both types of clients struggle expressing exactly what they want. They use broad language. They say, oh, I want a nice relationship. I want my partner to treat me well. It's basically like saying I'm for all good things and I'm against bad things. This is the problem because it shows that you are not in touch with your feelings and needs. And I understand that when there was no space for you all these years, of course, that you don't get a chance to get to know yourself. You didn't have opportunities to explore your needs, practice voicing them. You learn that you have to repress them. But if you want to be loved for all you are, you need to get to know yourself and then allow your partner to get to know you as well. This unconscious repression causes attachment trauma. That's why we often wind up operating on this emergency survival system. It literally feels like death when our partner doesn't call us, for instance. Or for you with avoidant tendencies, you feel overwhelmed by others' emotions. And when you are in a survival mode, you cannot create a connection in a relationship. I'm not saying you can't be stressed out while in a relationship, but you need to be aware of it and you need to communicate your needs. And for that, we all know what needs to be done. It's that self-explorative work. I will give you a few general questions that will help you with this. So we develop these tendencies based on our life experience. They served us for decades, but they cause obstacles to romantic love. But don't worry, I will not take away your survival strategies. I would just love to inspire you to add more to your assortment so you can widen your experiences so you don't have to repeat the same old patterns. Let's try something new, shall we? Let's try looking at things differently. We are talking about changing the ways we see ourselves, love, relationships, world, man. Let's adjust our beliefs to what we actually want. You want love and connection, then a part of you must believe in it. We can honor your cautious parts and those that want an epic love story in their lives. I know a change can be scary, but here is something that should help. The way I conceptualize this with my clients is basically almost like doing experiments in life. So if you conceptualize it as an experiment, it doesn't strike this survival mechanism in your body. Instead, you allow yourself to explore, to be curious. What could happen if I assume that things will work out in the situation? What if I could meet a person that can give me all I need in a relationship? This is what you are after, right? And we are here to make it happen. But for that, you need to know what you need again. So when you conceptualize this new way of being as an experiment, you can create them as small or big as you want. So I suggest starting small. What would happen in a coffee shop if I actually ask for everything I wanted and how I wanted? I'll tell you one thing. I come across as very assertive. I have a hard demeanor. Perhaps the defense mechanism, right? So I find myself having difficulty asking people in restaurants, coffee shops, hotels to accommodate me with little details. I feel it's hard for me to ask for some change in a particular order in a restaurant. But during my recent vacation, I was aware of this particular thing. I was aware of my discomfort of asking for my little needs, my limiting beliefs about myself. 
I feel people perceive me as not someone who is easygoing. So this prevents me from voicing my needs. I don't want to be a pain in the ass. These people's jobs are to make you stay comfortable, make you feel welcomed. And guess what happened? I practiced asking for my needs and I actually built a closer relationship with the staff. People love to make other people happy as long as you're grateful for it. As long as you appreciate their efforts, they love to see you happy, especially men that you date. So what would have happened if I thought all these people were there just to get their paycheck? They don't care about me. It's really offensive to think like that about people. It's really offensive to think that men don't care about your well-being. Ultimate joy for everybody in this world is to make other living beings happy. So that could be one little experiment for you. Start small, ask for simple things and see how much beauty you bring to the world. And of course, express gratitude. Here is a little scientific secret. In our nervous system, we have this innate attachment capabilities, especially to those that you take care of. We attach to babies, kittens, puppies, and people that we invest in our time and effort. And guess what? That makes us happy. That makes our life beautiful. So what's the point of this little story of mine? You need to remember that men that you're dating want to make you happy. And if you don't share your needs and desires, you rob them of the opportunity to feel happy by making you happy. You can allow your partner to make you happy, but you need to give him a little manual, okay? So stay with me because I will tell you exactly the questions you need to ask yourself so you can start enjoying your relationships more. No more being a fixer of things and focusing on what's up with him, but instead starting from yourself. These prompts will help you so much. Just think about how powerful that can be, not just in terms of your clarity, but also attracting the person that wants the exact same thing. But we are all so afraid to show up as who we are, to express ourselves, to ask for what we need. Just remember, what you need is exactly what somebody wants to give you. So here are the questions that will help you be more in touch with yourself, your needs and feelings. I suggest just being completely honest with yourself, okay? Like, go deep. Don't censor yourself. Most likely, you will find yourself uncomfortable writing. This is where healing happens. This is where you change your nervous system and ways of thinking and being in this world. I will also give you a prompt that will help you release that discomfort. First question will help you clarify what you truly want. How you want to be in a relationship. A day in my perfect relationship. In order to make this work, I suggest you write based on your current life. Don't put anything that's out of your current life. Make it fit in your current life as is, because it's going to be easier for you to conceptualize and connect with it. So what does that mean? Like, you go to work, how do you treat each other? What happens? Do you kiss each other? Do you hug when you see each other after work? How do you spend your weekends? Do you make coffee for him or does he make coffee for you? One of you will be a morning person. The other will be an evening person, most likely. Just describe it in as many details as you can. This will reveal to you how you want to feel in the relationship. This is how you integrate your emotions and senses with reason. You will know what you want beyond saying I want a nice partner who treats me well. Beautiful relationships aren't classified based on some wonderful events vacations and trips. Yes, that happens as well. But beautiful relationships are based on these day-to-day -day moments. Watching Netflix is one of my least favorite things to do, but falling asleep on my husband's shoulder while watching Netflix before going to bed is one of my favorite things to do. Guess what? He loves that as well. Next question to ask yourself. How likely do you feel you can achieve this kind of relationship? Is it likely to happen to you or is this some kind of fairy tale? This will reveal to you potential limiting beliefs about yourself. And here is a hint if you think it's very hard to achieve. I'm telling you it's not. Really, you need to embrace it and say, hey, this is what I want. Then we just need to figure out the best way to get there. And the final question will help you understand yourself and why you may have those limiting beliefs. 
What makes me uncomfortable about asking for all these things? Was there any time in my life when I felt I needed to hide my needs? When have I became conditioned to think I need to be less demanding? I'm too big. I'm too much. So explore that and realize all these things that you want and need is what everybody else wants and needs. You want a partner who wants and needs those things that you want and need. So it's really about aligning with yourself, claiming what you want and expressing it openly. That's when things become easy because you know the parameters, what to look for, what to expect and what to ask for. Then you can communicate your needs easier instead of speculating in your head and hoping things will work out. If you need help with communicating your needs, you should definitely download my captivating communication scripts. They will help you communicate that you need him to pursue you more consistently. It's down below. If this was helpful and you would like more tips on what to expect at different stages of courting, you should watch this video. And for God's sakes, ring the bell to get all my videos. Ciao till next week.